So that's pretty much what's going on behind the verses. So the only thing I, I hear that's really significantly different, I mean, if it's really considered different, is the four chord uh, behind the, the solo. It's basically using the same type of note combinations as before, it just might sound slightly different because we order the notes. So. So it's just the, the root F, the fifth, the open strings A and D, and the octave. Alright. Um, the only other thing he might be doing a little different is, um, again, it's all around the same kind of notes, but on the one chord behind some of the jamming, it's sort of like uh, a little bit of a, like a... Um, Soul Man type of a... Alright, so it's just... Uh... Alright, it's just a C, B flat, open, G, and then back up to C. It's playing around with the chromatics on and off the chord and of course the G is the 5 of the C chord so you're still kind of staying in the chord um, and some variation of those notes but that's the idea right. um, and there's one part during at least the first part of the jam in one of the live records where he where he goes up to the 4 chord from the 1 with a longer chromatic So just basically taking it from C on up, using the op utilizing the open string. All right, and to fill in the gaps on the rhythm, sometimes you have to double up on notes, otherwise you get there too fast, you know. So that's a couple, just a couple of basic, they're just sort of bass player bluesy type techniques, right? Um, variation of the theme, so. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so the, the only other thing left is uh, on at least one of the live versions, they, they do like a, like a, a pentatonic type of climb down to the ending, and it's hard to tell exactly what they're doing because there's multiple guitars and stuff, and it's hard to pick out what the bass is doing, but um, I think if you're gonna if you're gonna play with your band, you're gonna just agree on whatever the guitar players are playing or whatever you guys all agree on. So the general idea is something like you know, and you could probably even play that behind what's on there, and nobody would even notice. But so I'm just kind of climbing down the C chord in the pentatonic, and then underneath it, and ending up on the flat to see. One more time slow. Alright, so I'm just playing on three and five and one and three and I'm only playing on the last three strings down. So um, it's basically sort of just like a pentatonic exercise. So Okay, so uh, there's just uh, there's one time in the song it does a restart, like the entrance. And then instead of just hanging on, uh, it goes chromatically up from C to F. Alright, and so you can, you can use... Um, the closed A or the open A, depending on how you want to finger it, but basically you just got to work your way in time from, from C to F, and then you have the choice of the other different parts. You know, all the, all the different types of ways of stating the chords. So. so just a quick note about this song. Um, it's a blues 
and which means it's repetitive, which means that you really can't go wrong as long as you're stating the right chords. As long as you're on a C and you're and you're stating a C enough that the band isn't losing it and you're staying in with the drummer, it doesn't really matter all that much if you're exact on this note or that note as long as you're playing in time. So um, I think the more you play through the parts of the song and the different options on the rhythm, you can mix them together. Just because on the record the bass player may be only doing and, 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 instead of it doesn't mean you have to, because it's not going to throw the it's not going to necessarily throw you know throw anybody off because you're still stating the right chords. So um, I think you just need to play through it a few times. After you learn, after you get familiar with the different parts, until the point, until you get to the point where you're not having to think so much and you're more playing, and then you'll just throw in whatever sort of feels right. So, um, at least that's how I approach, especially repetitive blues like that. Uh, there are certain songs that, to me, are more structured in blues. Like um, if you play Statesboro Blues, the Omar Brothers, there's kind of a definite bass line that defines that song, in my opinion. This song. As long as you cop the feel of the bass line, I think you can mix the parts together. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do any any uh, disservice to the song. So, and uh, one other thought on the chords, by the way, uh, a lot of these chords have notes in common, so that helps. Cause like, I know it's a fast-moving song, and if you get a little confused, I mean, um, the C, which is the main chord of the song, is also happens to be the fifth of the F chord. And the G, which is the five chord in the song, also happens to be the fifth of the C chord. So if you happen to hit a G note by accident or whatever, um, or on purpose, um, while you're on the C chord, you're not really out of the chord, see? So you can use it as a passing tone. Even the F is not going to put you way out on the C chord, and the F is also the minor seven of the G. So that's going to be a little more strange in the blues, but it's not going to be completely out of, out of whack. Um, so keep that in mind too. You, you, you know, you, you're going to be. You can take a few chances as long as you're conscious. The biggest thing I think is to be conscious of where the chords are moving to, what chord you're supposed to be on, and what chord you're going to, and when. So listening to the drummer, listening to the movement, because you are, you know, steering the ship as far as that, and and that's where I think the bass player has to be conscious in this song. So, but I think it can be a lot of fun once it becomes not thinking as much as playing and muscle memory, which of course is true probably of a lot of songs. So.